the census is so important. And I think sometimes, because it only happens once every 10 years, and it's been happening for so long that sometimes we forget and we don't uh, completely understand the reason that we go through this exercise every 10 years. Um, it has a huge impact on our state. We need to really focus on a grassroots effort. Um, Georgetown is such a wonderful part of the state. So I was really sad to see, as you heard, um, how underperforming Georgetown uh, has been. You know, Georgetown is a coastal region uh, and you're not alone. A lot of our coastal regions, uh, their, um, their census count, their voluntary count is rather low. We need the census, our census numbers to be high because it helps fund programs for education. It helps fund programs for our seniors. Uh, the biggest part of money that comes to the Department of Aging comes from the federal government. And uh, that's how we develop programs for seniors all around the state. Our roads and bridges, our infrastructure, uh, so many things, higher education funded by our numbers count with the census. One thing that makes the census very real to us, uh, you've all been hearing about the $1.9 billion we received in the CARES Act funding from the federal government to reimburse localities and businesses that were directly impacted um, by additional expenses related to COVID-19. That $1.9 billion was calculated based on 2010 census numbers. Uh, now, you might think, wow, that's a lot of money. Money. That was great. Our 2010 census must have been really well. We must have did really well. Well, based on the information from the Census Commission, South Carolina was upwards of 20% undercounted in 2010. So uh, obviously you could see, even though it was a lot of money, South Carolina could have done better uh, to help meet the needs of what we faced here over the last few months during this pandemic. Something that's very near and dear for Georgetown um, and all of our coastal cities is hurricane season. Funding that we get from FEMA during times of weather disasters like that, uh, that funding is calculated by our census numbers. So uh, lots of reasons Georgetown wants to uh, really have a high standing. Something we talked about, I'm sure you all kept up on the governor's task force with Accelerate SC. Uh, one thing that came up over and over again and uh, almost all five of the subcommittees was our need for broadband. This pandemic really has shined a light on um, areas of our state that are in need of better broadband. So we uh, uncovered, uh, we've known about it, but lots of people did their homework and uncovered all kinds of pots of money from the federal government that are available to our state to help reach broadband uh, especially to our rural communities, uh, communities that have been notoriously um, hard to serve where it comes to broadband, that all that money, all that funding that can come to us is all based um, on our participation in the census. So the census only happens once every 10 years and we can't go back and change uh, what happened in 2010, but we can do better going forward. Uh, numbers that we collect from now through uh, October 31st, that will be what we will have to live with for the next 10 years. So most of you know me, uh, I'm an accountant by trade. And so I like to uh, do this little um, numbers calculation for everybody I'm with, because it shows the magnitude uh, of the census and the amount of funding we get here at a state level. So uh, for, for every person that logs in and gets counted, the state receives just a little bit shy of $3,000 per person. Well, if 100 people do not fill out the census, over 10 years, the state loses $3 million on those 100 people. That's the magnitude of this. And I think when you put things into numbers, it really puts it into perspective. I really believe that there isn't a person who wouldn't fill it out if they really knew the benefits that come to their area uh, if they did. The census information that is collected by law is uh, protected for 72 years. Uh, 
It can't be used for anything else. It can't be shared with other uh, departments within the federal government or state government. Uh, and that's a law. So nobody can get around that. So normally, in a normal census year, by now, self-reporting would be over. Uh, the Census Bureau would be out knocking on doors. Uh, because of COVID-19, we uh, delayed. Uh, all, everything has been pushed back. So self-reporting will go to October 31st, making sure that we can do our part uh, here in partnerships to get everybody online. This is the first time since the census that you were able to go online. So everybody can go on to www.my2020census.gov. Uh, literally, I did it for my household. It takes less than five minutes. So we're not talking about you know, carving out a big chunk of time for anyone. Uh, this, is, this is historic uh, as far as delivering the census data in a very secure and safe way. Uh, we really would like to minimize the amount of people that we're bringing in contact while we're collecting this data. So that's why it becomes so important that we get people online. When I looked at that data, I could see there was a lot of um, poor response rates along some of our coastal cities. So I looked at um, Surfside and Myrtle Beach. And really where we had a high concentration of non-responders, we always had a correlate, we have a correlation to people who own second homes and rental properties. So um, my staff has been working with the census department in Washington, DC, because I think a lot of that has to do with people who own second homes and just aren't thinking about the fact that we have to report those residences. So, um, it's very easy, you know, you go into your residence address, your second home, your rental property, short-term rental property, uh, put in their address and tell them that zero people live there full time. Uh, once you answer that same question twice, it will ask you, well, why is nobody living there? Is it for sale? Is it a seasonal rental? Is it a second home? And so we're hoping that by seeing this along our coast, um, we by county would be able to provide uh, the census department a, a download, a spreadsheet, uh, if you'd have it, that would list those addresses so that it would clear out those kind of properties so we can really laser focus on areas in our city um, that we know uh, we have year around people and we can focus on them through their churches or other organizations. Um, maybe city centers that serve not only children and daycare, but also serve our elders. So on June 17th, uh, we are bringing down a challenge. We're asking that every county get 200 homes signed up. Uh, and uh, if we do that across the state, we believe we'll have a 2% increase. Um, statewide, which will make a huge impact on our numbers count. Right now, South Carolina is sitting at 39th, tied with Hawaii. Um, for all of you who know me well, you know I'm really competitive, and so uh, we can't stop here. South Carolina needs to be on the top of this list um, because it's good for our people, and it's good for uh, the, uh, just good for every single community and the needs that we face. Field operators uh, and enumerators, door knockers, <clears throat> those guys are already out. Um, and those areas that do not receive um, mail to their house because they have a post office box or they're they live in a rural area. So there are some folks who don't receive mail to their house. The Census Bureau does not send census questionnaires to post office boxes. Therefore, we have to have enumerators on the ground to hand deliver the census questionnaire to the resident. The census employees are boots on ground as we speak. Um, so if by chance somebody knocks on your on your door and they're claiming to be the census, they will have a badge, a government ID that looks like this. Um, and if you have any questions, concerns, fears, 
uh, the Census Bureau's philosophy is safety is first, whether that is COVID or your physical safety, right? So it's important that you remember that. If you have any questions, you call the police. Don't open your door, ju uh, call the police. So please be careful. We say that all the time. I like to share with people that the census is a relative, more like a sister or a brother to voting. And I say that because when we think about the things that the census does, we know one, it provides us funding, right? Two, it uh, provides us information about redistricting as well as the number of seats that we get in the House of Representatives. But with that, if our numbers are higher, right, the more people we have, the more of a need. Therefore, we may need more representation. We'll need more money from the federal government. So the, the, uh, the need, the money follows the need. Um, and when we when we when we don't count all of the people in our counties, we run the risk of also losing, right, or forfeiting funding, forfeiting possibly a seat. You know, we won uh, um, Rep Representative Rice's seat um, in the seventh district, the 2010, because our numbers were really good. But it can work in reverse. Um, the same thing happened. So that's why it's extremely important to get counted. And redistricting happens after the census count. So we have to get the, the census numbers to the president with well, the original date and according to the um, Constitution is December 31st. But because of COVID, we got a waiver um, and we'll get that in for the numbers to the president now on... And April of 2021, I'm sorry, and then um, followed by the districting numbers to the states by July 21st of 20, July 31st, excuse me, of 2021. At that point, the states then they go into their redistricting phases. First of all, from the from the level which you were talking about, uh, the first thing is that from the congressional part of it. Uh, we gained the seventh congressional district uh, because our numbers were up in the state of South Carolina. And when the numbers were up, um, it just doesn't happen. Uh, and I'm glad the Lieutenant Governor is listening to this. Uh, we actually fought to get the seventh congressional district on this side with the seven counties that we have starting with Georgetown, Ori, on round to Florence and Darlington now. So we actually fought for that because Upper State wanted it, Greenville wanted it, uh, Hilton Head wanted it, but we fought and we won. So we had to do some rearranging to go there. Uh, but when it comes to the local part, uh, when the census numbers are in, the first thing happens is the state uh, comes to us and we do the redistricting for the state of South Carolina for the House of Representatives and the Senate for the state of South Carolina. Once those lines are drawn and it's nothing easy because we do have knockdown dragouts. I just want y'all to know that uh, until we all agree and then we vote on it. Then it's in, it goes back to the governor. Uh, and after that, once everything is agreed upon, it's voted on, then it comes down to the counties and the cities and redistricting the counties and the cities. So lines could be drawn uh, in different ways for state, county, and city. So it's, it's a long process and basically it's nothing that's gonna happen uh, immediately in April. We probably will not see the real effects until 2022 because of COVID and because of us getting there and going around the table. So all lines that are drawn for the state of South Carolina, whether it be uh, the South Carolina House Representative, the South Carolina Senate, or the county or the cities or the towns, all of those lines are drawn in Columbia. Everything is drawn there. And, and I think that's an opportunity for us to remind everyone here 
how important it is for all of us to keep an eye on those activities um, to make sure we're watching what's happening because those decisions that are made impact all of us on a daily basis. So pay attention now to the census, definitely be ready and register to vote in November, but we're not done after that, we're just getting started. Then it's time to start watching redistricting to make sure that what happens in Columbia represents what you want happening in Georgetown, whether it's for the lines for your um, for your mayors, for your county council, for your for your school board, um, because those are the people who impact so much of your daily lives. Well, while the lieutenant governor was talking, and 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 I'm thankful for those who are here, and I want to give a strong shout out again, uh, and I want them to stand up, and uh, lieutenant governor, you can see that they are here. Uh, the uh, President, Ms. Reed, and the members of the Georgetown Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma. I want them to stand up because they have worked real hard uh, to this far to get folks to get on that census and get it done. And so they are our heroes. And I said that because, and I want them to give us a strong shout out. June the 17th, we just need 200 residents and I'm sure the Deltas are going to help us get 200 residents on June the 17th. We already got it done. It's already done, you know? I, I love the enthusiasm of Representative Anderson. He, Carl, you are amazing. And thank you to those women because he's got it right. When you need to get something done, you bring the ladies into the room because that's how it gets done, right? The challenge is, is that you're asking us as an entire county to come up with 200. And I'm very competitive. I'd like to see us along with the sororities, the fraternities, our, our nonprofit organization, and of course, our faith-based community. I'd like to double that. I'd like to challenge everyone in the city to say, we're going to do 200 within the city and the county. Let's really make this a challenge and let's go after 400. And I know it could be done. I don't think it could be done. I know it could be done because we need to get those numbers up because it's so vital for our, not only our elderly people, but our young people. Look, we're moving into a new normal due to COVID-19. And we're gonna need every source of funding to come not only to our, our city, our county and our state, but across this nation. And it's so important that we all work together at this time to make sure the sensors are done and I know it's always a safety and healthy and health problem with uh, concern, particularly with a pandemic. But we have to yeah. figure out, just like we do with when we worship on Sundays and when we do our testing, let's have some let's have some drive-throughs. Let's provide the information and in, in the manpower when people come and pay utility bills at the at the drive-ups and what have you. So as we move forward. We have to work together and we have to be a solid team within the Georgetown community. And I, I know we can do 400 and we get more than that. Let's go for it. So um, we're going to be out here pushing. You're absolutely right, Mayor Brendan Barber. We're going to do it with the faith based community and all of these others. We're going to join in and we're going to we're going to get that 400 because guess what? When we call Lieutenant Governor Pamela, she will respond to us. So that means that Georgetown just going to get more funding, more funding, more funding. <laughs> I Again, I just want to thank everybody again for their time and everything they've put, uh, put into um, helping out in the community, what you're going to do. Uh, thank you to all the ladies there. I mean, you guys have done a great job. And um, I went to a breakfast at the Divine Nine. You guys are energy uh, on top of energy. And I know if anybody can get it done for us out in the community, you can. You have great relationships. Um, and so thank you uh, so much uh, to our representatives, to Carl Anderson, to all of our mayors that are there today. Thank you. Thank you for, for leading. Leading is not easy, uh, but for using your voice uh, and your connections to make sure that the census is becomes widely successful here in 2020 for the state of South Carolina. Uh, I just wanna say again, I can't say it enough. Um, I am in it with you, uh, shoulder to shoulder, we will, we will get this done here in our state and my office and our resources are available to you at any time. Um, so do not hesitate to reach out if you need us. 
uh, our, our partners with the census and Mary Dell with United Way. Um, thank you and look to them. They are amazing. They're resilient. They never stop. So if you need help from us, we are simply a phone call away.